guys, it's Michelle Knight from Little Miss Bookkeeping and this video is how to use your Finance Yourself Academy Australian Small Business Income and Expense Tracking Spreadsheet. Whilst we truly believe cloud accounting software is the way to go, something is better than nothing. This work paper is designed to assist Australian small business owners to manually track their income and expenses during the year. It is also created with accountants in mind so you can give this work paper to them when it comes time to completing your tax return. Keep in mind this is a very basic work paper and not designed to handle anything too tricky. Sorry, it won't do your payroll or your BAS for you. This work paper is suitable for Australian small business owners who are typically sole traders or contractors. They don't have any employees and they're not GST registered. So they're typically 12 month or annual turnover is less than 75,000. This work paper is not suitable for non-Australian small business owners. It's designed for Australian uh, business owners specifically. It's not suitable for those who are registered for GST. So we haven't made any provisions for splitting out GST, helping with buses. Again, this is a very basic spreadsheet. It's not suitable for any business owners that have to run wages or payroll processing or have employees because uh, you'll need STP compliance software to do that. And it's also not suitable for those who need to produce invoices. This is just a tracking spreadsheet. It doesn't have any invoicing templates or capabilities. To set up this work paper, you will go to the Start Here tab. And you will watch this instructional video. So step one being going to your cover page and entering some basic details. We are using a fictional business in this demo called Beauty by Bruce. And we're going to do it for the 2023 financial year. The next step is to review and amend your chart of accounts. So you'll pop over to your chart of accounts tab and this is to list your different methods of how you receive or spend your money. So think of these as categories. There's different accounts for different things. All income or money in accounts will be income. It'll have an I at the front of it. Expense accounts, particularly direct costs, will have an E-DC. All your other expenses will have an E in front of it. And then we have provisions for new asset purchases, loans, other payments, and then under sort of your equity, we've put in a provision or account names. If you are a sole trader and pull out drawings, or otherwise known as wages, uh, if you put money in, take money out. We also have an expense account if you're unsure of where to allocate something and it might be good for your accountant to review. If you're a little unsure about what the account names mean, just pop over to your description column to give a little bit of clarity on what they're supposed to be used for. And then I've also put in a few examples in the last column to provide more clarity on that particular account. You'll also notice that this line items in this peach color. So I'll go back to the start here tab. This work paper is designed where you will either enter data in peach colored cells or select a drop down in a light mauve colored cell. So when you're setting up your chart of accounts, you might decide that the account names just don't quite fit. So in this demo, Bruce doesn't want to have all his income coming to just one sales account. He wants it split into his different services, lashes, brows, and now. So we've actually amended the data in here. We're happy with the direct costs, so we haven't uh, amended any of those in the other items here, but we did put in another a category for uniforms as he wants that split out. The next step is to review and amend your bank accounts and payment gateways. So at the bottom, we do have a little bit of an example where it just gives three bank accounts, if anything was paid out of personal funds and some payment gateways. Just be mindful not to double counting the transactions if you decide to code from, say, your bank statements into this work paper, as we know that some pay well, payment gateways typically deposit batch settlements into business accounts, so we just don't want to double dip there. If you've got any questions, it's best to ask your accountant about that. Beauty by Bruce. He only has two ANZ business bank accounts, so we have amended the data in here and he also has a PayPal account. You'll notice in the example month tab, there's just some pre-filled data to, I suppose, review, provide some guidance as to how you might 
enter your transactions into this work paper. Moving over to the profit and loss tab, this is where you'll track your income and expenses and review each month to see if you've made a profit. So all this data is flowing through from each of the peach colour tabs between July to June. This work paper is actually protected, so you won't be able to amend the data. It will flow through from any data you've manually entered in the monthly work papers. What I've done is pre-populated some data just to show you how this particular work paper looks. And I'll go in and actually show you uh, what that looks like. So Bruce started trading in January and we've populated data from January to May. To start completing this work paper, you'll just complete each row item. As you can see, for the month of January, he's made some lash and brow sales, his supplier Norris, and went down to the new agency and purchased some pens. All those items have come from his everyday account, and we've allocated each of the either sales items or expense items to the most appropriate account. I'm going to add in a few more examples. So let's say he had some nail sales on this day. Money was deposited into his everyday account and we're going to allocate that to his sales account there. Same with February, paid a monthly Google Drive subscription, paid a cleaner and had some lush brow and nail sales there. As you can see, the cleaner was paid from a personal bank account by accident, so we've just allocated that correctly. What I might do is add in another example. We're going to use the example that Bruce engaged some graphic design services for his business card, which was paid from his everyday account. And then we're going to allocate that to advertising and marketing. Very similar in March, some sales there. Slight difference is Bruce went and purchased a $3,000 lash bed. So we allocated that to the new asset tools and equipment account. He also put out $1,000 for drawings, which we allocated to his owner wages. And April looks very similar. We've got his services sales, bought some product from Norris and his monthly Google Drive subscription is there again. If we go back to the profit and loss, we can have a quick look at the total sales by month, or we can also look at the total sales by service. We can have a look and see the direct costs that he'd spent either by month or year to date. We can look at his overhead expenses. We can see if Bruce made a profit and loss for either month or year to date. And then for any sort of capital costs, uh, other liability payments or drawings or funds in, we can see that as a non p &L item down the bottom. You may wish to duplicate this work paper for future financial years. That is it. So I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions to make this work paper better, please leave that in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.